It's the night before the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, so what better way to go out there and converse about the topic swirling in the air than with a triple threat conversation about Canadian teams. Let's go over the Oilers, the Canadians, as well as the Leafs, and one player that has been on the market that... I mean, okay, maybe these teams are involved with this player, I don't really know. There are some speculation saying that there is a link or two there, and there are some other people that are a lot more optimistic on that idea as well. Let's go over Jesse Pugliarvi once again, because, oh boy, when was the last time we made a video talking about Pugliarvi? Let me just pull up my calendar app here on my computer. Pull you... ERV. Last video we made about this guy was... no, not March 20, 2020. That's not what we want to look at here. July 2nd, 2022. So on Saturday, we made a video talking about Pugliarvi and the Ottawa Senators and the apparent link that was established over there. But we have some more Canadian teams, as we said off the top, that could be in these discussions as well. Long story short, for those of you who are uninformed, Jesse Pugliarvi is a top Edmonton Oilers draftee. He was drafted fourth overall back in 2016. He's 24 years old, 6'4", 201 as a right-handed forward, and he is a current RFA. This guy needs a new contract, and in a season where he put up a reasonable 36 points in 65 games played, but a disappointing three points in 16 games played in the playoffs, you kind of question the certainty as to whether or not Pugliarvi's future at Edmonton is all too likely. You had yourself some rumors popping around that he requested a trade, which is something that actually had happened before. This happened back in 2019 when you had the previous regime here with Peter Shirelli. Pugliarvi requested a trade. They said no. He went over to Finland for a few seasons and eventually he returned. But now with the contract negotiations also in the spotlight, it makes for this entire trade conversation and the the idea of him not wanting to be an oiler anymore all the more interesting. This is a guy that in the previous Mark Spector Oilers report was dubbed as a quote-unquote play killer or something like that because the play dies on his stick and Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl, two of the best players in the world, they could not transform Pulley Yarvey into a legitimate top six player who had top six production. Now, 36 points in 65 games played isn't too bad. I mean, do the math over 82 games, 36 to be 65 multiplied out by 82. He he was on pace for a good 45 point pace. That's not terrible, right? But for a guy that was drafted fourth overall, for a guy that was supposed to be taken third overall behind Matthews and Line, you probably would have expected a bit more by the time this guy was 24 years old. And so now you have yourselves even more rumors popping up. This is what Kevin Weeks tweeted the other day. I'm told the Oilers are actively shopping Pugliarvi, and there are some interest from clubs in the market for his services. I'm curious to see if there's a match for a potential deal between now and next week's entry draft. Okay, um, Kevin Weeks, this tweet was published on July 4th. The draft is on July 7th, so it's not next week's draft, it's the draft in a few days. Either way, we're going over onto the fourth period and their summer watch trade watch list of 2022. This is as of July 4th, 2022, so two days ago, on the fourth period David Peñota's website. Paul Yarby is indeed one of the names that is listed on this entire list over here. He is the ninth overall player. If you read the write-up, it says this. The Oilers are trying to bolster their roster this summer and are exploring the trade market for upgrades. Moving Paul Yarby in a deal seems to be a possibility as Oilers GM Ken Holland weighs his options. Paul Yarby is a pending R. FA. The teams he has been linked to include the Ottawa Senators, we already talked about that, the Nashville Predators, the Blue Jackets, the Carolina Hurricanes, as well as the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the Habs are a super interesting team, in my opinion, when you talk about potential acquisitions. With Pugliarvi being at the spotlight there, you have to ask yourself firstly, okay, the Canadiens have a boatload of draft picks. First and foremost, it's the draft picks that stand out to you right away. Are they going to use any of these picks to trade away for a player or two that can actually help them out? I actually proposed that idea that said, hey, you know, the Habs have 14 draft picks in this year's draft, which is crazy. You're not going to realistically expect to have 14 guys drafted and eventually signed within the next three years because that's just a lot of players and you have to swing and hit on every single one of those prospects to make sure you sign all of them. So why not trade away one or two or three of these picks to either get more picks in the future or or get some extra roster players that can help you out right now. If you can package a deal of something like, I don't know, a prospect that is already in the system, maybe a middling defensive forward or something like that, as well as one of your later picks, you might be able to say, hey Edmonton, here's a package, do you want to take this on for an RFA player? 
I actually think that would go on pretty well. And for any Canadians fan that's saying, man, that's a pretty big price. A prospect, a regular forward as well as another pick lego what are you smoking buddy that's way too much this is kind of the thing the habs have so many picks they have so many prospects already they can afford to lose out on any of these assets because plain and simple a second round pick to the montreal canadiens is not as valuable as a second round pick to a team that doesn't have a second round pick the habs have so many assets that they can afford to lose out on a trade once in a while in terms of overall value if it means they're getting a player or an asset that they actually do see tremendous value within if Puliyarvi is that which he probably should be because i mean he's 24 years old he's still got a lot of time to progress into a top six forward and he's got pretty good defensive analytics there might be some more meat to the bone here now for Montreal, I could definitely see if you wanted to just try it out, because obviously the Habs are a quote-unquote rebuilding team, have Pugliarvi somewhere in your top six, maybe move him to the left side, honestly, so you could have a line of Suzuki, Caulfield, Pugliarvi, or play with... I don't know, Christian Dvorak and Brendan Gallagher, that actually seems like it'd be a pretty good line. The Canadians did have some really good success with Gallagher, Deneau, Tatar, and their defensive capabilities all those years ago. So for a player like Pugliarvi, who boasted a 58% Corsi on the year, there is a lot of reason to believe that Montreal could be interested here. Now, the other team that I also wanted to talk about is the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is an article published on theleafstation.com. This is, I believe, it's the fan-sided version of, or excuse me, the Toronto Maple Leafs version of Fansided. This article was published by Michael Maze. Jesse Pugliarvi is available in the Leafs need to be all over it, published yesterday at 6 a.m. in the morning. The article talks about how the Leafs need more scoring beyond their core four, and you do have yourself some options to go ahead and fulfill that role, whether it's through free agency or an internal option, or maybe even a trade. This is why the Kevin Weeks report is pretty interesting. The article then goes over the Corsi numbers, the advanced analytics, it's all pretty good, and it even talks about what Evolving Wild said here as well. Pugliarvi has been very good at even strength over the past two seasons, not really too sure why the Oilers wouldn't want to keep him. We project a six-year, $5 million contract if he signs in free agency with a brand new team. This is what the article says afterwards. A player who currently has a low asking price given his recent production and encouraging results is the exact type of player that Dubas should be looking at, and it's one that could unearth some incredible results if Pugliarvi can take another step forward. The Leafs do have a third round pick that they acquired in the Travis Dermott trade that could help them make that trade go through. Another option is surrounding their second round pick in 2024 as a way to further entice Holland to pull the trigger. There also is another asset the team could dangle that may make sense for both sides. Jack Campbell's rights. That's a really interesting idea. I'd be really interested to see if that actually manifests here. There remains little progress on the negotiations between the Leafs and Campbell, yada, yada, yada. So the fact that the Oilers want him makes for a very interesting substitution as well. It could make a ton of sense for the Leafs to send Campbell's rights, plus a later pick to the Oilers in exchange for Paul Yarby's rights. While the last time the two teams tried this tactic did not result in the trade for Zach Hyman, this year could result in an actual swap. And of course, you know, Pugliarvi was a very good hockey player when it comes to just being able to play hockey. We've seen all the charts and the teammates and everything, how the fact that every Oilers forward that was on the team, you have McDavid, you have Dreisaitl, you have Hyman, you have Kane, you have a whole bunch of guys. Every single one of these players played better when they were playing with Jesse Pugliarvi. They all had better numbers. They all had better offensive advanced analytics. They all had better courses. They all had better goals for percentages. Now, obviously, you have the big four in Toronto, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, that are all pretty good at scoring and putting the puck at the back of the net, even without a guy like Pugliarvi on their wings. But for everybody else, for the Kerfoots, for the Engvalls, for, I don't know if the Mikheyevs come back, I don't really know if that's the case there, but for everybody else throughout the lineup, you could definitely say that there is some much-needed depth scoring that needs to be fulfilled. Now, even though Pugliarvi might not necessarily be the guy who goes out there and gets 50, 55, 60 points on a season, if he helps other players get up to that 30, 40, 50-point mark too, I definitely can see some value there. So, if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, talk in the comments all your thoughts about the idea of trading away, I don't know, something like a draft pick and Jack Campbell's rights over for Pulley RV. If you're a Canadians fan, let me know in the comments as well what are your thoughts about similar ideas. If you're an Oilers fan, what is it that you want in return for this dude? We had already talked about in the previous Senators video how it's pretty tough to win a Pulley RV trade at this point since the guy's value seems to be so low and not as equivalent to what his on-ice value actually is. 
It's kind of a weird way to say it, but I feel like Pugliarvi and the value he has on the ice is a lot more than what Pugliarvi's estimated trade value is on the market. So how do you feel about these sort of proposals? Talk to me in the comments about your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 9 and bye.